Hi, I'm Jack Berry, and I'm here at Meadowbrook Country Club in the big opening weekend of their uh, renovated golf course. And Dr. Bradley Klein from Connecticut is here with us today. And Brad is one of the uh, big movers and shakers of how this all happened. So, Brad, tell us about it. Well, I don't know if I'm a mover and shaker. I privately advised them uh, starting in December of uh, 2013. They called me in. I had written a book on Donald Ross, wrote his biography, written a lot over the years. And they uh, asked me to help them uh, think about what they could do with the golf course. And so I walked the course. It was, uh, it was a lot of snow on the ground. It was a miserable cold day. I think it rained halfway through, but I could sort of see through the fog. And you could see that this was a fantastic piece of land and that the golf course was heavily treed and really wasn't making as good a use of the site and to the corners and some of the character and the creeks and the, and the elevations in the corners that it could. So uh, I've been very involved with a number of projects where I kind of help clubs think about what's realistic uh, about uh, improving. It's a very competitive market. The golf industry is a tough business. Uh, you have to invest wisely. There has to be a return on, int uh, return on investment. You've got to be able to convince the members. And so uh, it's not a matter of trying to get a championship golf course or a U.S. Open. It's a matter of having a golf course that's really fun, uh, uh, enjoyable, could hold state tournaments and so on, and, you know, maybe women's majors. But uh, it really has to work for the membership. And so the idea then was to uh, suggest to them uh, a number of architects that they could uh, consider and that they were up to that process of interviewing. And I kind of helped them with the script, and they did the interview. It was their choice. But uh, I, I walked them through the pitfalls, and I also kind of helped them strategize about member education. The hardest thing in a golf course restoration is uh, convincing the members to spend money. And, uh, and, and for good reason, because sometimes it's done really badly with overambitious green chairman, and other times uh, they may be uh, spilling a lot of money on, uh, on unrealistic expectations, or they hire the wrong person who is going to put their stamp on the golf course. And the idea here was to respect and study and elicit the, the history and the tradition. Uh, it starts with Willie Park, the six holes, and uh, uh, the expansion uh, by uh, Jack DeRay and Harry Collis. You could sort of see from aerials, and I helped them uh, acquire how the golf course had evolved. And so then the question was, who's going to be most respectful of the golf course? But who also had some interesting, innovative ideas? And so in the interview process, I gathered uh, Andy Staples just sort of stood out. And uh, Did, did you know Andy prior to that? I knew Andy. I had seen him at a couple of conferences. I had uh, been involved with him in a municipal assessment of a property in Los Alamos, New Mexico. And Which has been a prize winner, has it not? Well, that was a different one. That's Rockwind. I had nothing to do with Rockwind. That's in... Um, uh, eastern New Mexico. This was a municipal project of Los Alamos County, north of, Alba, of uh, Santa Fe. That's where I saw him, and I was really impressed with his attentiveness, his study, his detail. And we had done some presentations together in professional development seminars with superintendents and golf pros uh, in terms of efficiency, water management, ecology, and the relationship between sound environmental management and sound golf course management. So I thought he was on the cutting edge of all of that stuff. So I uh, had a lot of respect for his integrity and his commitment. And his interest in doing uh, classic work, but also, you know, a little bit of edginess to the, some of that as well. So do you think that, that he brought that uh, into his work here at Meadowbrook? I think people are going to be stunned and surprised and overjoyed. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. And, uh, you know, in any renovation, I've, I've seen hundreds of renovations. In every one of them, there's a small group of people who are miserable and unhappy, mainly because the putt that they used to have doesn't exist. So they have to relearn the golf course. And particularly on a scale of a, of a routing change here, there's a couple of holes that are different, but it's still the go same golf course. If you could go out there, if you played Meadowbrook before, you'll be able to follow the holes around with no trouble. But all the character, the shape, the elevation, the boldness uh, really is interesting. And what's also interesting it's not that it's harder. It's actually there's more options. Uh, you can bump the ball in. The bunkers look steeper, but they're not. They're just it's the same elevation from floor to top. It's just that the angle is sharper, so it looks scarier. So this is one of those golf courses that looks more uh, difficult, but yet actually provides a lot more opportunity for more diverse players. And so in that sense, I think it's going to be a lot of fun because the old course was tight. It was narrow. It was wet. Tree-lined. Uh, it was very punitive to the uh, high handicapper and was relatively easy for the low handicapper. This course now is going to be more challenging and more diverse for the low handicapper and a lot more fun and interesting and diverse uh, for the mid-high handicapper. Well, they certainly took out a lot of trees. I mean, it's a nice, wide-open golf course practically now. You look out and uh, 
uh, you can see all the holes. Well, you can see all the uh, all the holes, but there's still thousands of trees out yeah. there. There's lots of beautiful elm trees. Thank goodness they, you know, those elm trees are precious. They lost most of those. <laughs> well, but they still have them out here, and there's very right there on 12th hole on the right side. That's a kind of iconic uh, landmark uh, for the for that hole in the golf course. So you've got those. You've got some beautiful oaks and big maple trees. But they got rid of a lot of the little junk and the and the scrawny understory, so that it's almost as if the canopy has been lifted and cleared out, and some of the landforms that have been covered over, like on the right side of five, all these humps and bumps and all this really cool stuff that had been buried in trees, that's now more open. It's still a parkland golf course, but it's got more uh, open space in between and diversity uh, to to how the shots present themselves. Well, I'm sure that they're that they're going to have a great time getting out here. They got the, they have a full. Uh full tee sheet for the for the the weekend and probably for the rest of the summer i'll tell you one thing that's very impressive i've seen a lot of these projects i've never seen a board and a committee more meticulously study every possible financial aspect uh benefit cost all the options they studied it in a way that they could manage within their budget and so uh, they didn't go out on a limb and go crazy in debt they didn't go into hawk they didn't pile on all these crazy assessments. They really were smart about how they use their money. And in that sense, uh, I give them all the credit in the world for that very detailed volunteer planning by members. They're going to love that, Brad. <laughs> Good assessment. It's what I see. It's what I see, and uh, they, they get a lot of credit for it. It, it delayed, uh, it, it made the project take a little longer, but it's a better project because of it. We've been talking to Brad Klein, Dr. Klein here, who has uh, recommended uh, Andy Staples to uh, Meadowbrook, and uh, all companies are very happy. Let me just clarify. I didn't recommend Andy Staples. I recommended a number of architects that they should interview, and one of them was Andy Staples. He won the job. There was a fair battle. There were lots of fine people they interviewed, so I did not uh, recommend him over anybody else. Okay, we'll, we'll protect your top five. <laughs> I think there were seven. <laughs> okay.